So, we had seen that a formula is satisfiable if and only if its SCNF is satisfiable. Our aim was to extend resolution method from propositional logic to first order logic. Now, let us see how the resolution process goes and then whatever we need we will have to introduce. Okay. So, suppose we start with uh, these clauses. So, I have one clause having P x and say uh, not q x or say not q y when this is one class. So, that means, we will be writing it as and or or which one it is a class now. So, the formula is in SCNF. So, it will be written as and or or huh? we are taking a class each class will have or. So, let us take p x and not q y, we will take or here. Okay. This is one class. Suppose, I have another class which is say uh, q y okay. and another class which is simply p x. Right. So, this might have come from one entailment one consequence like for each x uh, each y q y implies p x. Okay. Similarly, you can say this is for each y q y and then on the right side you have entails you want p x. So, it will be in the form there is x not p x some such thing. Okay. Then when you use redux word upside down bring it to the other side that becomes for all and then you have p x right. Okay. Now, it is easy to apply resolution on this you can just take this class plus this class and you have negation of this negation of this. So, you take just p x right then that is all it will say nowhere it will move after this fine. Suppose you have not p x here then of course, you can use this this and reduce it to bottom that will be a resolution refutation of the class set. Okay. So, when you take set that means, this is a class and this another class and the other class just like your P L formalism S C N F is that. Okay. Is that clear? It looks we can extend that is what it says, but let us hurry through see another argument. For example, you have say uh, all men are mortal. So, that you would write to write as say m x implies some d x for each x right. So, which will give rise to the class not m x or d x. Okay. Then you have another say Socrates is a man. So, you would write m s, s is a constant now. Fine. From which you want to conclude that Socrates is mortal, so that will be D s. Okay. So, now in this side you have the class set as not m x or d x, then another class is m s okay. and using redux or upside down not d s will go to the premises set. Right. So, you have not d s. Now, there should be a refutation of this that is what we feel. Okay. So, first thing is how to conclude from not m x and m s this would resolve fine this would resolve and we should get something like d s here. Okay. So, this step we are not convinced, but something has to be done then from these two steps you would get a refutation. Okay. But what does this step means? It really corresponds to the argument here for each x m x implies d x m s therefore d s that is what being inferred here that should be correct, but we do not know how to tackle that in the resolution process if you just follow the p l formalism fine. So, somehow from each x we have to go for any particular s all that we see is x has become substituted by 
S. So, substitutions we have to take care now, right. Moreover, we want this to be done by a machine, not always looking at it and finding the appropriate substitution. So, machine should be able to find out what should be the suitable substitution there, right. So, now our responsibility is to formalize this part, how mechanically it can be done, okay. So, for that purpose, let us start studying the substitution a bit, they might be helpful, okay. One more thing is you may not always be able to solve using one variable and a term substitution. There can be many variables and many substitutions of terms by those variables or replacing those variables simultaneously, right. So, it will be something like a set of expressions of the form x by t, right. But we can confuse with the sets, already sets are there in classes, we will use some other notation. Instead of curly brackets, let us write square brackets. So, we say that a substitution is an expression, it is really a set written in a different way of the form say x 1 by t 1, x 2 by t 2, x n by t. Right. Simultaneously all these x 1 to x n will be substituted by their corresponding terms t 1 to t n, that is what we mean, fine. Now, where this x i is should be variables, and t i is are terms, okay. and something else we want, since we want it to be simultaneously substituted suppose you have x by a here and also x by b there then which one to substitute we do not know right. So, we will also assume that all these x i's are distinct ok. So, x i's are distinct this much at least we need is that clear that is how we will be tackling the substitutions now. So, suppose you have gone one step in the resolution process using the substitutions. Now, you see another substitution is required. So, you should be able to compose the substitutions with the earlier substitutions, right. So, first we have to study what is composition of substitutions. Slowly we will be dragged to so many things, because we require resolution to work. But let us see how this substitution works. Suppose I have a term t which is equal to f of x 1 comma g of x 2 x 1. Okay. I take a formula x which is say p x 3 x 4 x 1 and then this t fine. Suppose I take the substitution sigma equal to say x 1 by a x 2 by f of x 1 right f is of two variables x 1 and say x 2 again ok. So, we just start with this now let us apply this sigma on t. So, we we'll write that as t sigma. So, sometimes if it is readability is at some problem we will write another bracket here for t or brackets for sigma and others right. Sometimes we will use them. Now, let us see what is t sigma, what will it be? At a time we have to substitute all these things that is what it means simultaneously not one after another fine. So, x 1 will be substituted by a that means it will be equal to f of a next is g of x 2 will be substituted by f of x 1 x 2. So, that is f of x 1 x 2 that is x 2 is gone next x 1 is substituted by a that is it. You are not supposed to write again substitute x 1 and x 2 that will be again t sigma of another sigma will be coming up at the right fine that is how we will be proceeding. So, we have x sigma. Now, 
x is p x 3 x 4 x 1. So, they are not substituted at all they are kept as they are x 4, but this x 1 becomes now a and then t. Is that clear? That is how we will be proceeding. Now, for the compositions, we need compositions, right. So, let us define how composition is taking care of the replacements. So, we again give a definition let say sigma equal to a substitution of the form x 1 over s 1. Say there are m variables to be replaced by m terms and say theta equal to similarly for y 1 by t 1 y n by t n they can be different in number. Okay. So, we define sigma composition with theta as another of substitution this would be a substitution that we have to check also right. So, obtained in the following way. Well, how do you suggest? Suppose I have this theta. So, I am taking it from the right side that means, here there will be t or some x on which it will be applied right. So, that means, first sigma is applied then on that theta is applied right. So, now suppose in sigma x has changed to a x has changed to y let us say. Now, in theta y has changed to a then ultimately x should change to a right. So, that means, there will be a component in sigma which is of the form x by y and there is a component of the form y by a in theta right is that ok. So, in place of x we are going to replace y theta right y and y has become changed to a again. So, theta is really applied to y the denominator fine. So, you must consider this set first consider x 1 by s 1 theta x 2 by s 2 theta x m by s m theta. Possibly there is some change, so we first use this theta on all the denominators. Now, what happens is there can be some other y's which are not covered in x 1 to x m, they should also be added right. Because on a formula, suppose this is a formula like your x 3 here, I apply theta where x 3 is there, I do not have x 1, x 2 for simplicity, but x 3 is there, say so x 3 by a. Now, that x 3 by a should also be added here, otherwise it will not give me the composition, is that ok. So, you have to add all those things. Now, add y i by t i to this set provided y i is not equal to any of this x right. So, that means, it does not belong to x 1 to x m right. If that y is already covered here ok, then this one would have taken care. So, I do not have to add those things, I will add only those which are already not covered x 1 to x m fine, but this need not be a substitution after this addition of all these y i's you have updated it. So, it is in the form x 1 to x m s m by theta and then some other y's which are not x s fine, but that need not be a substitution because some of these things can give same variable say x 2 and s 2 is our x 3, x 3 has become x 2 in theta, then x 2 by x 2 is not allowed in a substitution, they should not be, they should be different right, otherwise it is vacuous fine. So, that vacuousness we can really deal with while defining the substitution itself, we may say no x i is equal to a t i that t i 
fine. So, you may say x i is are distinct and x i is not equal to T i otherwise unnecessarily you will be writing it out which is not required. So, now we will delete all those things delete from the updated list list uh, any substitution of the form say z by z. If they are same just delete Okay. So, this deletion will be done only from this set really not from y i is by t i is because they are already a substitution right. So, they will be deleted from this set fine then we can update this z by z instead of writing z by z we can write delete x i by s i theta provided x i equal to s i theta right. So, let us update it. delete from the updated list x i by s i theta if x i is equal to s i theta fine that should give us the composition of sigma and theta is that clear. Let us see an example how it proceeds. So, suppose I take sigma equal to let us start with that x by a y by f of a z by f of x and theta equal to y by z x by b z by f of a. You can add one more say u by y. Okay. So, let us see what is sigma composed with theta. So, now for computing this first we have to take sigma where denominators will be replaced by or is operated by theta. Right. So, first we consider the list x by a theta y by f of a theta z by f of x theta right. So, this is equal to a is a constant does not matter. So, x by a remains f of a is also a closed term. So, that remains now x is a variable. So, x is taken to b. So, this becomes z by f of b. So, next what we do add anything extra here which is not x y z right. So, x is there y is already there z is there only u is not there. So, that one only will be added. So, update it to x by a y by f of a z by f of b and u by y ok. Now, you have to delete all those things which are repetitions x a y f a z f b there is no repetition here right. Had it been z by z then you would have to remove it otherwise leave it as it is. So, this is your sigma composed with theta. What about theta composed with sigma? Let us try to see what it is. So, then I have to consider first theta denominators will be replaced by or operated over sigma. So, that gives theta as y by z sigma x by b sigma z by f of a sigma u by y sigma. Okay. So, this is equal to 
y by z sigma which is f of x x by b because b is a closed term f is a closed term so f of a as it is u by y sigma so y sigma is f of a right now there is nothing to be added in sigma we have x y z already we have x y z here so nothing to be added now anything to be deleted no because no numerator is same as the denominator here if they are same then we have to delete it fine so that is your theta operated with sigma composed with sigma are the same no right that different because x to a x to b we found the difference we can go further but that's fine so you see that sigma composed with theta is not equal to theta composed with sigma it's just like your permutations right? two permutations with it they need not commute that's what exactly being done here also okay so what you can see is that if theta sigma are substitutions t x uh, okay let's write one only so t is a term x is a formula then t operated with theta composed with sigma should be equal to t theta then operated sigma that is our purpose of defining the composition fine similarly x theta over sigma should be equal to x theta operated over sigma fine it's now convincing how does it go but then you need a proof okay proof is very uninteresting because it's by induction anyway we have nothing else huh? so but induction on formulas will be easier because you can just have induction on the number of free variables in x right and you can also limit all your formulas to quantifier free formulas no problem because that's where we will be using but nonetheless it is true for any formula so you can have induction on the number of free variables over x but then for t it is a bit difficult again you can have number of free variables but that will not give any structure of t right so there you may need how t is looking like what is the pattern of t inside how many brackets are there and so on that is you may say on the level of the uh, term t okay so we leave the proof here but now you see our definition is itself mechanical it giving a mechanical way how to proceed for the composition of uh, substitutions we can compose them our aim is to use the composition or the substitutions to do resolution process where you may have mx and then another not dx then you have not ma mx and not ma should resolve right so naturally you use the substitution x by a right on both of them mx and not ma use both of them same substitution x by a so on a there is no change you would get ma not ma and they resolve now right that's what we are going to do so applying the substitutions for this resolution to work fine now you see if you start with say mx and not ma it is easy to see what substitution it is okay suppose you have mx and you have not ma now you see that our substitution should be x by a choice of the substitution 
so that both of them will be able to resolve right once the substitution is applied this becomes ma this remains as not ma and they resolve okay now the thing is they may not be that simple as one variable and one constant there can be many terms many variables also okay so a general substitution might be required to be applied now how to get such a substitution okay we can guess here easily like we want to write one algorithm how um, mechanically we will be able to guess or get that substitution which should be applicable right but there is also a problem even if you substitute you get some way that may not be very general right for example i have m of x i have not m y fine i can have one substitution which is x by a y by a right with that itself i can go for the resolution this becomes ma this becomes not ma fine but then there is one more i can say x by y okay with which i'll get my here not my here they can also result but i would prefer this because by this i can have a free variable i can use the same thing later this whatever conclusion i get from this can be used later but this two if i take x by a y by a i can never use it it's gone right so generality will be lost if i choose such a substitution so you want a general unifier to do it they are called the unifiers or substitutions which will keep this generality preserved till we need it right so this is what we want to do fine so for this purpose we will define again some other concept say from these two i would consider not mx not ma this set okay then i will say that x by a unifies both the literals right once i apply x by a both of them become same that is the concept of unifier. So, a substitution is a unifier of a set of literals or even you can say set of clauses, but let us take only literals now if that becomes a single term after the substitution right is that okay. Now, for the set of formulas you can go there is no problem of course, we need only literals or clauses still you can apply for general formulas ok let us say for clauses let a be a set of clauses. So, our assumption is all these clauses are in DNF because we are using only SCNF here. So, already they are disjunctive clauses disjunction of literals. Now, we say that a substitution sigma sigma is a unifier of a if a sigma is a single term ok which means if you have a equal to say x 1 up to x n I should have x 1 sigma equal to x 2 sigma equal to x n sigma. If this happens then that substitution is called a unifier of the set A right sometimes we will say unifier of the clauses x 1 to x n fine. Let us see one unifier suppose you take x equal to we will start with that formula p x y f of g of z. and then the next is p u f of u f of v. So, this is my set of clauses ok. I take sigma equal to as suggested x by a y by f of a then u by a z by a and v by g of a 
is it a unifier or not we want to verify okay so now we see p x y f of g of z sigma is applied over that right so this is equal to p now in sigma x is a y is f of a f is remaining as it is g is remaining as it is z is a okay that's what it is and then p u f of u f of v sigma so this is p u is a then f a f v is g of a that's same okay so you see that both of them are same therefore x uh, sigma is a single term so sigma is a unifier what about x delta so this is x or let's write equal to p x y f of g of z p u f of u f of v so now on a set directly we are applying the substitution so it means once you have a set sigma sigma and some theta will be equal to set of all x theta such that x belongs to sigma this is the notation we are using fine so this is equal to and we have delta so delta let's take x over u y f of u v g of z fine so this is p now x becomes u y becomes f of u f of g of there is no z right so it remains no v is g z x is u y is f u so it remains there is no z and then p u as it is f of u as it is f of v is f of g of z right so this is a single term right so delta is also unifier okay what about theta let's try that also x theta equal to now here theta equal to what where let's write that theta is x over u y f of u v g of a So the difference between delta and theta is x by u is same, y by f u is same, p by g of a instead of g of z, right? So let's see, x theta is p, x is u, and y is f of u, and then v is v is not occurring there, okay? V is not occurring there. Z. Again, same. Okay. Is it same? Huh? Here. So here, what happens? V is replaced by G of A, right? It is not a unifier, right? Second one is different now. Second one is. P U is there is no U, so remains F of U remains F of V becomes F of G of 
A, right? They are not same. So theta is not a unifier. Okay, but suppose you have z by a now in theta, then it becomes a unifier. Is that okay? So let's have another set tau equal to x by u, y by f of u, v by g of a, z by a. Now let us verify whether this is also a unifier or not. Once you have z by a, so this z becomes a that will unify. Is that clear? So, this is this says theta is not a unifier. Okay, but tau is a unifier of x. So, unifiers are not unique, that is clear now. Huh? We want a general one. Which one of this you would choose? Theta is not a unifier. Which one of sigma, delta, tau you would choose for a general one? Delta you would like. Huh? Yeah? Why? It keeps the variables. Huh? But we can give another mechanical way. We can say that all the other two, these are the two unifiers, can be seen as delta composed with another substitution, right? that is possible, is it so or not. For example, let us say sigma, is it sigma equal to delta composed with another substitution, is it so. Let us see sigma takes x to a, so u should be going to a, right? u has not gone anywhere it is there, huh? u is going to a, I can say u goes to a here also, it will be deleted anyway in the composition, fine. So then what else? z to a, yeah, is that all? that is good. Huh? Let us find out whether it is that or not. So, now with delta first I have to uh, take delta and update it. So, from delta I would get x by u and this call it something call it alpha. So, now x by u alpha y by f of u alpha v by g of z alpha I must consider this at first okay then what else I should do I should add to it all those in alpha which are not x y or v none of them is x y or v so both of them will be added so we will add to it u by a z by a. Okay. Now, this is equal to x by u alpha, alpha is here. So, u alpha is a, y by f of u alpha, so that becomes f of a, v by g of z alpha, z also becomes a, so g of a and u by a, z by a. Is it same as sigma? Yes, it is same as sigma x by a, y by f of a, u by a, z by a, v by g of a, right? This is equal to sigma. So, this is correct. Fine. Then we would prefer delta as our chosen unifier. Okay, we will give a name to it. Let A be a set of clauses
a substitution or we can say a unifier directly unifier delta is called a most general unifier. or let us say m g o, if for each unifier sigma there exists a substitution alpha such that sigma equal to delta composed with alpha. Okay. So, delta is our chosen one, you would say we will be happy with delta, because any other time we see some unifiers, we can use another substitution to get that back, when that is why we will choose this delta, but then most general unifiers are also not unique. Okay. Can you see that? why they are not unique. For example, come to this x, this was your x, delta was a most general unifier as we have seen here, we have not proved yet. Right? So, now what happens, can we choose another most general unifier? You have x by u, y by f of u, right. So, instead of this suppose I choose u by x, y by f of x. So, ultimately in x u was figuring out right, now u will not figure out x will figure out fine that is also a most general unifier up to renaming of the variables right, but there can be others non trivial also not only renaming of variables fine that is also possible. So, anyway what we have seen is most general unifiers are also not unique, but then we need one most general unifier that is enough for us, we will continue with that. So, even if not unique it is ok for us. Now, we have to give a procedure how to get one most general unifier fine and then be content with that whatever we get from the algorithm. So, once the algorithm is used we will say the most general unifier, because whatever that algorithm computes that is our MGO for others we forget, others can be renaming or some substitution can be applied on it to get them, right. So, let us see the procedure to get one most general unifier, I have a class p x y f of g of z, I have another class p u f of u f of v. Now, how do I compute a substitution which will make them same? that is what the most general unifier is. I do not want to take uh, or replace variables by constants unnecessarily, if possible I keep the variables as it is right. So, what I do? I just check both of them start scanning from the left, we are mechanizing it right. So, we should not use any semantics or anything. Now, once I scan I see that p and p are same matching, I want to match them that is all to make them same. So, next I have x here, I have u there. So, one of them should be replaced by the other, right. Now, what our algorithm will do? It will have one as the first, another as the second, right. So, first one if it is a variable, second one is a term that is what it will search for, then substitute x by u, variable will be substituted by the term. If the first one is a variable, then it does not want to verify whether the second one is a variable or not. But the first one is a term which is not a variable, it will try to see whether that is a variable, then that will be taken, right. So, it will give ultimately one unique, that is what. So, now I have to find or add to it my x by u, okay. This is added, but once this is added, there can be other places where x is there, it is not here, fortunately, right. There are other places where x is coming. Then there will be a matching problem here again, but once you apply this x by u, then all those x's have been removed, right? They are really u. 
when you apply this substitution you will be getting u not x. So, better we should not go hurry to find out the next mismatch we should apply the substitution on the formulas then go for the mismatch right. So, now I have say uh, call it theta 1 which is this I compute uh, x and y let us say. So, I compute x theta 1 and I compute x y theta 1 right. So, this becomes p u y f of g of z and this becomes p u f of u f of v that is the effect of theta 1 there is no x there. So, it is reproduced as it is. Now, again I match so already I know up to this it is matching I do not need to match to make it efficient but you can just write crudely match again. Now, again a mismatch is occurring y and here is a term f of u. So, I take theta 2 equal to theta 1 composed with y by f of u right. So, ultimately what I have to do this y over f of u will be applied on my earlier computed formulas ok. So, I get x theta 1 really x theta to this and again y theta 2. So, that means y by f of u will be applied on x theta 1 similarly on y theta 1. So, apply you get p u y becomes f of u then f of g of z and y theta 2 is p u f of u f of v you can go for matching. So, p matches u matches f of u matches f f matching brackets matching right. So, g of z equal to v right. So, that means I take theta 3 equal to theta 2 composed with v by g of z that is my most general unifier ok. By that time my two literals have been unified to one literal which is p u f of u f of g of z that is the single term ok. So, this is basically the algorithm of computing most general unifier right you can write the algorithm now. Huh? But there is something you have to say in the beginning when they will not match right. For example, we have started conveniently with p suppose this starts with p this starts with q you cannot get a unifier because predicates cannot be made same only variables and terms can be right. So, these types of things you have to write in the beginning first you check for the not if you have a whole set for that you are computing the most general unifier. So, here the set comprising two literals x comma y there can be clauses also fine. So, now for the whole set you have to start take any clause or any literals rather rather than clauses let us come to literals you have to match the literals now. Now, in that literals it is a set of literals let us say. So, first thing is if one is having not symbol the other is not having not symbol then unifiers do not exist. Right. One is starting with not another is not having not. So, mismatch will be there nothing can be done right. So, it is not of this and it is p u as it is then they cannot be matching. So, next thing you say if they do not start with same predicate then they do not match they will never have any unifier. Now, comes to predicates that is all of them should be starting with the same predicate or starting with negation all of them and then predicate fine then only you compare the next step for matching then find the first mismatch if the mismatch is for something else to different function symbols then they cannot be unified one is f of u another is g of z nothing can be done right. So, the mismatch should be one is a variable other is a term both can be variables because variables are terms also right at least one of them should be variable then take the first variable and the other term 
have this substitution then compose go to the next step right compute in loops that is how more generally unifier will be computed. 